All right, everyone, let's go on. Let's look at a little bit more here. This is something, this is going to be, we're going to, we'll look at something very technical at the moment, but it'll be very useful uh, as time goes on, especially for debugging. For example, I want to see, you know, results of, uh, if, remember when we were launching our project and we would write something like console.log and make it say something in the console. We want to look at that. We also want to see um, when, for, for debugging, sometimes it's useful to have Eclipse tell us what's happening behind the scenes that, that I can't see. So that means we're going to change our perspective, literally. Eclipse has what are known as perspectives, or different screens of content depending on what sort of task we want to accomplish. So right now, I'm going to close this because that's going to give me a seizure. Um, if we go up to uh, Window Menu, uh, open perspective. These are the different perspectives that we can work with. Uh, and notice also at the very top right, another way to change perspectives is here. This says Java. We're in this default perspective. And under Window, Open Perspective, you know, we've got Java. So we could switch over to... which one was it? Uh, we'll look at DDMS click on that. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, window, open perspective, DDMS. You can also, you'll also be able to do it once you do that once, you'll be able to switch back and forth on the top right here. Normal Java perspective for editing, DDMS for seeing some of the um, technical aspect of things. You can even click that open perspective and it's going to be a different screen to open different things. We don't need that. But We've got Java Perspective, DDMS Perspective. What can we do here? On the left side, this should show you a list of any devices that you've got running. So I had to restart, so I don't have a virtual device running, but it would show there. Uh, it shows my real device. If you uh, click on a, virtual, on a device on the left here, and at the bottom you can uh, rearrange this screen here. I'm going to make it maximum like that. I'm not doing anything on my device. Mine's a real phone. And look at what it's doing behind the scenes all of this time as I'm not even touching it. Um, action. Battery charged 93. Um, clock. Something about a clock there. Battery is still at 93%. Eventually it'll say 94%. It's just stuff happening in the background. That's interesting. So you're not going to see so much data on a virtual device because it doesn't have a cell signal and all of that. But this is just going to go on and on and on. The cool thing about um, this perspective is when we get to the point about like writing something in the console log or checking what is our app doing, we're going to use this screen and then we're going to filter these results. So. The screen up over here should show if there are any apps running, for example. Mine shows org.apache.cordova.example. That looks familiar. That's the package name. Remember when we created a brand new empty app uh, via file new Android project? We, we gave it com.yourlastname.test1. So here's the Here's the package name of that project. That's the project we get straight from the Apache Cordova, uh, I mean, from the PhoneGap Cordova uh, template, org.apache.cordova.example. So this is my app that's currently running. I could have other apps on my, on my real device here and launch other apps, and they should show up. But um, what I want to do at this point is I want to filter out my content, because this is just going forward. Look at that, everything that I'm doing, if I lower the volume and raise the volume and all of that, there's going to be something here that tells me you raise the volume. It's just going to keep scrolling, so we're going to set up filters. Let me just put this back here. Uh, set up filters on the left side here. It's giving me all messages. So we'll do this again when we, when we really need it, but I want to show you right now because it'll be very useful. So here under Save Filters, I want to add a filter. Uh, 
Right now we're looking at the log cat, uh, the, the catalog of, you know, the log of all, of all data. So uh, click add here and then we want to give it a name. This can be anything. We'll just call it uh, example app. And it, we're saying, do we want to filter the results by a tag, a message, a process ID, or an app name? Well, I want to filter it by an app name. I want it to tell me what is my app doing. Because here it's telling me way too much. It's telling me, you know, under this tag, well, this was an LGE test, and this was a key guard thing, and this was a debug and a clock. So I want on my application name here to type the name of my application. Since we're all running the example app, our application name should be that. Org.apache.cordova.example. We can tell it what to show us, if there are any error messages, if there's any info messages. I want to keep it verbose, which is everything for the moment. So any filter name, and then we tell it what do we want to filter in this non-stop torrent of data. And I'm going to say, show me by my app name. So click OK. And now on the left side here, so if you select example app, it'll show you data here. <coughs> this is still doing its thing, 5,000 messages, 5,030 messages. So I can switch to all messages, or I can look at the 41 messages my app has given out, and then I can backtrack. It's all time-stamped. So when I first loaded the app, it did that. Pause, there's an error, no such file class path, change to debug mode, etc. So this is all this stuff happening behind the scenes. And on my, in my case, there's a line here that says load URL file in the WW folder index. So there's some line that we can change deep inside Cordova, the example project, that says load the index file by default. We could change that to say some load the file called myapp.html if we want don't really recommend it. Index uh, HTML is often the first uh, page that loads up in a site. We should keep it on, uh, on PhoneGap as well. If I scroll back down, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do stuff like this. I'm going to click my home button. When I click the home button it says paused the application. Handle the pause. Show status icon on inactive. So everything that you do has some sort of event attached to it. Right now, as soon as I press the home button, uh, the phone created a paused event. So I can write, we can write uh, JavaScript that say, if there's a pause, do this, such as play a sad sound. Um, once I bring the app back, so I'm going to go here and bring the app back, resume the app. So I can deal with that event. What happens when we resume the app? Make a happy face appear. So these there are all of these events that are happening that we can that are that can trigger things. And there's nothing really to do in the app, so I can't really do anything else. But um, you know if I force quit the app it no longer shows up over here and then I'm also going to clear out my log. This this has a clear so you don't have to do this but I'm just showing you that if I clear the log, okay I've got a brand new fresh palette here and I'm going to launch the app brand new from the device itself so I can see this is all the stuff that's happening when I just loaded it. Just by loading it, that shows up. And then other other stuff, too, in my particular device, you know, it might be saying, well, this is a Qualcomm chip, and it's an LG this and that, and when was it built?
And then so there's a green line here that says received event, device ready. So this is what I'm saying, that there's a point when everything's trying to load, then there's a device ready, and now we're ready to take a photo, uh, open up uh, contacts, uh, access location, GPS location data. So that event was fired. So this is the this is this uh, this screen here, and another aspect of this that we'll use not just for debugging and figuring out what is our app doing. Uh, it's also something cool here that we'll use later, and I want to preview it now. Notice, uh, make sure you have a device selected. You got a bunch of icons at the top here. One of them is a little camera. If you click that camera, this will preview what your screen looks like. It's not live, so if I do something here, it doesn't automatically show up there. You have to refresh it. So this is a way to uh, get screenshots of your device, what it, whatever it's doing. So later on when we create our, our, our store listing and such, this is how we can capture screenshots. Now right here you can see a preview. You know that, that Lucky Numbers app that I have live at the moment? I'm, I'm reworking it a little bit with a brand new icon. So it follows a little bit more the aesthetics of the, of the latest um, Android um, design aspects. So there's a preview for you. Question? This screen here? <coughs> yeah, same here. Um, the thing here is that it's supposed to show you the actual pixels of your of your device. So if you've got like a you know 800 tall device, 800 by 600 or whatever, it's trying to show you 800 pixels. My screen is smaller, so my projector here is smaller, so it cuts off. But it, it does show the whole thing, and what you could do a little bit more work is you can click save and that'll save an actual PNG file that I can save to the desktop and then actually view it from the desktop and then you can see the whole thing there because this that snapshot view is not live anyway you know once once you do something on the device here it's not gonna refresh until you refresh it so if I go to my apps here I'm on my apps but it doesn't show my apps until I refresh and then you can save the snapshot done and then you can view it here Um, yeah, but if you rotate it, you're gonna. It's a different. It's a different view. Yeah. So if I if I rotate it. No, no, no. Just take a snapshot and rotate it. Yeah. So rotate here. Then I have to turn my head. Yeah. Or the monitor. I think these turned. Don't turn them. But at least that gives you a full perspective of what you That's true. If you save it, it's also sideways there. All right, so um, we're going to look at this perspective uh, as time goes on. But now, how do we get back to normal? Anyone remember that? Go back to the Java perspective. Right there. So let's go back to the main Java perspective. Now what you can explore on your own, we're going to wrap up the lecture soon, what you can explore on your own is loading last month's project into this project, into this example. I'll give you a hint. You can 
drag from your Windows desktop into Eclipse and it becomes part of the project. It's going to ask you, what do you want to do? Copy the files into my project. And I simply dragged that and now it's part of my project. So think about that. You try that on your own and then we'll do it next time. We'll, we'll take our last month's project and drag it into our, our Eclipse example project and then we'll, uh, we'll continue from there. Before we wrap it up, what we've done here, you might want to take it and keep working on it at home. To keep working it at home, file import like we did previously. Okay, to work on it at home, I'm going to exit Eclipse. Go ahead and save everything, exit Eclipse. And open a computer window and on the left side go to your go to your account. Uh, your account folder. Mine's instructor, yours is lab. Go to your lab folder. What do you see inside the lab folder that is relevant to Eclipse? Workspace, yes. So inside of lab, you'll see workspace. Open workspace, and you'll see today's project. Example. Copy that to your flash drive. That's today's project. So when you go home, you can do file import and import that, and you'll keep working on it at home if you want. When we come back next time, so that we don't start over completely, I'll give you my example if you want, or you can use yours with your pretty colors. And then we'll, we'll open it up, and then we'll put in the, the project from last month and keep working. But we want PhoneGap as our foundation so that we can make our humble web app into you know, a native type of app. That's the whole point of this class, using PhoneGap to create an HTML5 project. Question? It seems to me that if you start bringing in your index.html file and just import it into the project, it's probably going to overwrite what is, uh, the, the one that has the Cordova roots. That's true. So when, uh, when we do it together, we are going to make a backup of that old one, import the new stuff, and some of the stuff in that old index, we're going to copy from that old index to the new index, like Cordova JS and a couple of other things here and there. So to drag and drop it, it will pretty much work, but there are those little things that we need to take care of. Yes? So when we started all this, all we used the phone gap for was when we imported the example template, mm -hmm. and then it, it created the Cordova.js file. So after we've done that, do we not need PhoneGap anymore? No, we're still using PhoneGap. PhoneGap is everything that this project is. All right, attention everyone, we're not quite done with the lecture, please, yet. We're still having questions asked. Um, but since we now have the Cordova.js... Yeah, uh, like I said, attention everyone, we're still, we're still kind of talking here. We're not quite done yet, so... Um, we still are going to use Cordova.js, definitely. And the whole structure of the project we're still going to use. But we're not going to use that index.html file anymore. We're going to use our index.html file mm -hmm. from the previous class. Our own JPEGs and all that other stuff. It's not like in last month when we, in our link, we linked all of the web sites to the CSS. And then near the end, we just imported the CSS file. And then we didn't need the website anymore. Not like that. Do you mean the website as in the the address? Somewhat, because remember toward the end we downloaded all of those files and kept them in our folder. Right. So we're gonna bring all of those files from that project into our into our project in Eclipse. And our index file from the previous month will take over our current index file. Um, but we need a couple of lines from that index file to put into our last month's project for it to be fully phone gap compatible. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? General questions. Also, looks like uh, the Cordova application has some ideas which it has added. Like, uh, like the Cordova has some ideas which it has added. Where at specifically? Uh, if you go to Cordova, there is a library. Some of these got added. 
because I mean, in order for you to run that program as uh, Android app, it's just not the JS part on this computer. Yeah, as soon as this loads up, I can confirm that. But yeah, it, it's going to be... That's why we'll do it together. You can ex start exploring it and see what you find out, but we'll, we will do it together that there are going to be little nuances here and there that we do need to deal with. For example, we have added code log dash 2.9.0 yeah. Yes, exactly. And we will continue to use that. Well, this doesn't quite want to load up, but... Yes, we will we will deal with all of that once we come back with on Thursday. So um, that's it for the moment.